Good morning YouTube people. We are going to do a project today on how to make a wood sign. We got an email request that says, hey, how do you do that? It looks really hard. I don't know if I really want to get into it. And we can take questions and answers, I mean, at the end. But I'm going to show you one way of doing it um, that's fairly easy and straightforward. Now, there's a YouTube channel on here that Eric and Dave Roten R-H-O-T-E-N, I believe, and I'll put it in the caption. They do an excellent job of a whole bunch of videos on sign making, techniques, finishing, and things to buy and things to do. But if you're not sure if you really want to get into this or if it even looks like a fun hobby to you, I'm going to show you an inexpensive way, I hope, to figure out if you like that. What you're looking at right here is a sign I did for some kids for a barn that they have. They wanted a sign that said tack room. And I did this the same way I'm going to show you, but we're going to do it in steps. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. What's step one? Log on to Google and do a Google search for cartoon images or coloring book images or coloring book templates or anything along those lines and at the top of your search you'll see images click on images scroll through and find an image that you'd like to carve onto a piece of wood and don't make it really complicated and don't make it way way complex in detail and I'll show you one that I found for my neighbor whose kid you know wanted me to make one uh, about their dog so I'm gonna stop and set this up and we'll talk about it okay step one is to find a piece of board uh, like this. This is just a piece of pine. You can get it out at Home Depot, Lowe's, or wherever you want. And don't worry about the dimensions or anything right now. Let's just make it easy. I have it here, and I got a piece of carbon tracing paper. You can get carbon tracing paper online. It's relatively cheap anywhere, or down at Michael's or one of your hobby stores. So I just put a piece of this on here, however you want. And then here's the photograph of what they wanted me to do. Now I would suggest that you secure this with tape to the wood so it doesn't move around on you because you're going to have to trace this image. So first step is put it on here like this, tape the corners, take your time and trace the image. Okay, step two, you're done with this and now this is what you have. And I'm going to focus this a little bit better. Okay, so this is what you have after you've done the tracing. <coughs> Excuse me. So I told them I'd give it a try, but it may be have more detail in it than, um, well, than I'm able to make look right. But we're going to try it anyway. We're just having fun. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to set up my palm router. I'll show you that in just a sec. And then we're going to carve this image. One moment. Okay, we're back. And so you're wondering, how are we going to carve this? Well, I have right here, I have a DeWalt, it's a 611, it's a palm router, and it has a base on here that I got from Eric and Dave's website, which is www.makeawoodsign.com. They make these, it doesn't come with this DeWalt router. And it's a nice little base plate. It's got handles, which is nice. You can hold on to them, and you got a lot more control when you're doing detail work. <laughs> so then you say, well, what kind of a bit? Well, there's a detail bit on here. I'll see if I can zoom in and get a close-up of that detail bit. Hang on just a sec. Okay, so there's a detail bit on here. You can get them online off of Amazon or a lot of websites, but also uh, Eric and Dave's website sells them too, and it comes to a fine point. How do I set the depth on it? Well, I do it real quickly. You've got your adjustment right here. I can open this up, and it's got like a depth gauge. I can set the depth. Okay. I make it to the thickness of my wrench. This is the wrench for it. I set it on here and bring the tip up so it's just touching the top of the wrench and I call it done. I don't do any super exact measuring. Now the router is ready to go ahead and start carving on the sign. So I'm going to pause, set this up, and I'll show you a little bit of what we're doing and we'll go from there. One moment.
Okay, I have this set up. What I'm showing you now is I have wood screwed into here, right along here, and right along here in a big L. And I put my piece of wood in here, and then over here on this far corner, okay, on this far corner up here, I screwed in a little piece of wood, and that stops this from moving. It stays intact. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. This is just the way that I do it and the way I'm doing it today for the simple carving to see how this turns out, and we can play around and have Okay, let's find a point here and let's just start. Got my on and off switch, it's a variable speed. I have the speed set up. Okay, now I'm going to go around this whole sign with this detail bit, and I'm going to just go over all of the tracings that we did with the carbon paper, and I'm going to see how it turns out. Now, it may be way too detailed, and it may be hard to, you know, carve on some of these because of the way that the lines were drawn, but we'll find out. But this is all in having fun, and this is how you can quickly carve something. Give me just a moment. <coughs> around the whole thing with the detail router like I showed you. And so now what? So now you have to clean it up. Now what I use is I got one of these brushes right here at the dollar store. I just go around and I scrub it. Okay, and then if you have an air gun or if you have just a brush, you can brush it off. Okay, what I use at this point, because these are a lot of very thin detailed cuts that the detail bit makes, I have an ice pick. And I go around and I go through all of these grooves with my ice pick. So I'm going to stop the camera and I'm going to do that just by going just like that. And it will clean it, it'll clean it out really well. You just go all the way around it, everywhere, and it cleans it out really well. Okay, when you're done doing that, we're going to blow it clean again, and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. So just one moment, because there's no sense in you watching me go around this with an ice pick. Okay, I'm back. Now... Uh, they wanted me to add a name to this. I cleaned all the, uh, First of all, I cleaned all this up with the ice pick and blew it off. They want me to put the dog's name on it, and they would prefer the lettering towards the bottom. So uh, we'll, we'll try that. It gets a little closer to the edge of the wood here than I would like. But that's okay. We'll go with that. Now, these letters that you see, and I've got some back in here. I got these off of Eric and Dave's website. They sell these pattern letters. Um, they're not very expensive. You can get them in a whole bunch of different sizes and a whole bunch of different fonts. They're great people to buy stuff from. The prices are very reasonable. Anyway, you can print off a piece of paper with the font that you want and the size that you want, and you can trace it. Um, I just had these letters. I wanted to show you something different. I use the letters here for this sign and I probably will put them right here along the bottom. So what I did is I figured about where I wanted it. I made a mark and I drew a line all the way across. Then I take my ruler and I set it right on that line. Let's see. I take my ruler. It's an old ruler. I set it right on that line and I hold it down hard and then I line my letters up the way I want them to be. Okay, and then after that, we're going to sand this anyway. I use a light spray of primer black, and I just shoot over this very lightly so it will outline these letters. I'll show you that here in a sec. Let me just finish lining these letters up the way that I want, and then I'll show you the next step. <laughs> okay, I had to test for a minute because I don't have any primer black, and I don't have any of the Marsh Black ink. You can buy marsh black ink at Amazon and there's a lot of websites that works really well 
Um, I got that trick from Eric and Dave's site too. What I have is I have a little Badger Air spray brush that'll do the same thing. It's right here. And I use uh, some black dye that I had. So I put it in here. Now when you spray this, either way, you want to be very gentle. If you don't, it'll blow your letters and it'll kind of screw things up. You can still sand it and start over, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing. And you want to make sure you come around at all different angles because of uh, your lettering. Now, this is water-based. If you want to know what it is I'm using, it's trans-tint black dye in just a little bit of tap water. So, I'll just go around. This will take a little bit, a few more minutes longer to dry, but you can mix it with alcohol too. It'll dry instantly. This is just what I had. That's enough. I gave it a real faint spray. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back and we'll lift the letters and then I'm going to show you what we'll do next. Okay, here's another shot of it. I had to put it on a little bit thicker. And so anyway, you spray this on lightly over these letters. Let it dry, okay? I give it time to dry. You don't have to. You could grab the wood and flick them off. You could grab the wood and just flick them off of there if you want to. I give it a little bit of time to dry. I've got other stuff to do in the shop, so I give it a little time to get tacky at least before I remove the letters. And I'll show you that here in just a sec. Okay, time's gone by. They're tacky, so you can just flick them off of the board, or I just do this. Eh, they kind of bled in a little bit, but we can still, I can still see the outline real well. So, uh, I wouldn't use water, I guess, next time, maybe alcohol because it evaporates faster, or just stick with primer black. I think it's Rust-Oleum that Eric and his dad use, or you can get, like I told you, the Marsh Black ink. Well, they make multiple colors of ink. It doesn't have to be black. You can use any of those to get these outlined. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up my other router. Now, you don't have to. You could use that detail router, but I'm going to put a different bit in there and I'm going to show you and explain to you what we're going to do next because I'm going to actually go carve in, this is called inset letters, as opposed to outset if I would have went just around the outside so that they stood out. I'm going to do these inset. Um, to do them outset I'm too close to this edge down here. It's not impossible. I'm just not sure how it would look. So I think it would look a little bit better doing inset uh, and we're playing around so let's give it a try. Give me a moment let me set it up. Now the other thing I'm going to do while we're doing that I'm going to spray this black in here with that same black either primer or whatever you got and try to get it all into all of these surfaces. So I'm going to do that real quick and then I'll set up the router and we'll go from there. One moment. I did a little test here with a 60 uh, degree groove bit, I just wanted to see if I had the, the depth set right. Now the depth when I do these is a little bit different. I kind of set it to the width of the cut. Um, you'll know. I don't go too deep though. I don't really ever go past much past that wrench measuring that I showed you. Um, and if you have to, you can clean up in and around it. And you can go back with your detail bit and touch up anything that you want. But this actually gives me peaks and valleys and gives me a decent little cut in here. And I'm going to do the other three letters the same way. I'm going to pull this back and I'll show you one of them how I'm going to do it. Okay. So I have the 60 degree. I've got it all set up. all set up and I'm going to do the U here. And I'll show you real quick. Again, I use this uh, I use the stiff bristle brush. Clean it out real quick. Use your blow gun if you got one. Blow it off. 
take a look at it. If you don't like something or you're not real keen, like I need a little bit of a better groove here, and I could touch it up just a little bit. So we'll do that real quick. Okay, and I'm going to do the other two letters the same way, and I lift up frequently to look and see if I've made the cut the way that I want. And you can kind of go back and forth or in little circles or whatever, and that'll create all those little peaks and valleys in here. Let me pause the tape, let me finish this, and we'll talk some more. Alright, <clears throat> what I, okay, what I did here is I finished carving these out with that 60 degree bit in a bigger router. You could still use the little router to do this. Um, I just happen to have two routers, but anyway, I have this done. So, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint the inside of these letters black. And then we'll go from there. Now the only other thing I did is when I was done, I took a piece of 80 grit sandpaper in my hand after I used the brush. And I just went like this a few times to knock all the little fuzzies off. This is pine, so it fuzzes up easy. So I'm going to pause it, shoot this black, and then I'll come back. Okay, got a drill press set up here and I have a jig on it which I'm going to pan down here and I'm going to show you. All this is is all this is is three quarter inch plywood and I screwed a piece of wood on each edge and then I used that hole saw drill and drilled right through it and you can see the turning marks right here. Then I just used C clamps on each side to hold this on here nice and tight. And let me see if I can zoom in and get you a little close up. Hang on. Okay, there's a close up view of it right there. And this will come down and it will actually notch a corner out of this piece of wood. I'll show you here in one sec. There's our project. I'm just going to set it right in here. Like that and if I hold it it'll hold nice and steady right here and I'm gonna notch out that corner here we go one sec all right I'm gonna here we go you go up and down with it a bunch of times because it'll stop it from wanting to bind inside of the bit shut it off give it just a sec drops out. Here's the piece right here. I'm going to do the other corners and I'll be right back with you. Okay, here we are back at the workbench. There's our sign. It's all dirty, dusty right now. But you can see I've notched out all these corners. Down there. Up there. Now it's your choice. You can leave this alone and they make little round drum sanders that go on your drill press. You can clean these up. Or I have about a half round router bit and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach that on my router and you can secure this to your table and you can go around this and put an edge on it. Or you can try multiple bits. There's all kinds of edging bits that you can do or you can just leave it like it is. But I'm going to put an edge on it, and I'll be right back. Okay, what I did, I routed the edge, right here shows you, all the way around it. I just clamped it on my uh, workbench and I just went around it with a, half, I think it's half inch bull nose kind of rounded uh, router bit all the way around it. You can see it over here, all the way along. Okay, then I put my little piece of block wood and I secured this back into this L that uh, I talked to you about earlier, holding it down tight. Then you can see up here, I drew like a oh, free-handed, like a cloud around it. It's not perfect. I didn't want it to be. We're just playing around. So it's just like this all the way around. So now I'm going to use my router and I drew a line here. I don't want to get up close to this edge. It'll ruin the look of it. 
But I thought to do something with this area is, you know, it would look good. So I'm going to use a 90 degree bit that I have. You can use the 60 degree. There's no rules in this. You can try whatever you want. It's your assign, your project. Do what you want. <coughs> but <clears throat> I'm going to follow this around and then I'm going to go back and forth, up and down, sideways, round and round, whatever, and create a lot of peaks and valleys here. Let me move this back. I'll show you the beginning of what I'm doing and then we'll do the sign. One moment. Okay, here I got the router. It's got the bit in it. I'm going to fire it up and I'll show you the beginning of what I'm doing here. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to turn it on and... Okay, I started back up. I'll let you watch it for a few minutes. You'll see what I'm doing here about going round and round and creating the peaks and valleys. Okay, so you'll see where I did over here. I outlined this and I did all these peaks and valleys. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. And then I'm going to hit it with sandpaper by hand just to knock all this little fuzzy stuff off. I'll be right back. Okay, so we went in and did all the peaks and valleys and carved all this out. Going back and forth, up and down, sideways, whatever. Um... I'm not going to hit these fuzzies. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to go around. I'm going to paint the edging all the way around this black for right now. It's just material that I have. You can do it any way you want. But make this edge black. And then I'm going to let a little bit of overspray hit these peaks and valleys here of black. I'll show you why in a few minutes. We'll play around and have a little bit of fun with some coloring. So edging all the way around black, a little bit of overspray, and I'll be right back. Okay, I got some red stain in my airbrush. You can use whatever you want. You can make it black in here. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to add a little red to it, I think. Let's just see what happens. that's enough I didn't hit the whole thing with it I just hit it here and there I'll leave it alone and let it dry for a minute and I'm gonna switch over to yellow okay, okay right I made a little bit of an error I got ahead of myself doing the video I'm gonna let this dry real well and then I'm gonna sand this then I'm gonna hit it with that red just a little bit and then we'll continue I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play around right now we're just having some fun but like I said um, let me let it dry we'll sand it and go from there okay we're back this is dry now, this reddish color. I used a random orbital sander that I have, and I used 80 grit. And I went over this whole sign lightly, and I got most of the black off. I don't want it all off. We're going to experiment here with, uh, you know, adding some color to it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to change to 150 grit or 220, whatever I have laying around. This is a sign. so. I don't need to worry about sanding through the grits other than I want to make sure I got off you know the scratches from the previous grit but uh, 150 is where I'll start we'll look at it and then we'll decide from there and so I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna move on to the next stage of finishing hold on one sec I'll be right with you while I sand it with the 150 okay I've sanded it with the 150 I'm going to you don't have to it looks fine the way that it is. Uh, I'm going to turn around now and I'm going to lightly spray a little bit of this red that I have. Um, I'm going to spray just a little bit of red now. 
on this sign. Not a lot. I'm just going to just give it like a fade. I'm going to stay away from these areas because I'm going to show you when we go back with yellow. But hold on just a sec. Let me get the red set up and I'll be right with you. Okay, here it is where I used my little airbrush. Uh, I have it hooked up to a compressor. Um, I'll give you information on that later if you're interested. But use whatever you have at hand. You don't have to do it this way. You can just wipe it on, dab it on, brush it, whatever you want to do. So now I've given it this light red. I'm going to put yellow over it now, an amber yellow. Let's just see what it looks like. If I don't like it, remember, I can always sand this back down real quickly with either the belt sander or my random orbital sander. Take it right back down, except for in here, and start over. So right now, let's leave it. Let's shoot it with the amber, and let's see what happens. I'll be right with you. All right, this time I'm going to let it roll while I uh, give it the yellow. Alright, let's let that dry for a few seconds. If I want to lighten it, I can put like 320, 400 sandpaper and I can go over it very quickly and it'll lighten it up. That's one way to lighten it. If I want to go darker, <clears throat> I just simply spray another coat over the whole thing. Let's give it a few minutes, let it dry. Let's take a look at it. It's got just some real light red shadowing in here and eh, it doesn't look bad. It looks okay. So. We'll take a look at it here in a minute and decide what we're going to do from this point on. Pause it, let it dry, I'll be back. Okay, quick. we're back at it. Now, what I'm going to do is I looked around. I don't have enough gloss uh, finish to put on it, but what I do have and I do use a lot of it right here. This is Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch, two times ultra cover matte clear. So for the first couple of coats, just to seal it up real well, I'm going to use the mat, and uh, I've already done the very back of it. I always seal it with something. Um, depends on what I got laying around. I sealed it with the mat clear this time. Other times in the past, I, I have leftover finishes. It could be lacquer, who knows? But I always put a seal coat on the back. I don't worry about how it's sanded, but I take care of the front real well. I'm going to. There's a very light breeze. I'm going to pause this for a minute, and I'm going to put this ultra cover clear mat on there and we'll go from there. I'm going to put two coats on and then I'll be back. Okay, that is two coats of the mat. I'm letting it dry. It's almost dry to touch. I decided I'm going to put a hanging chain on this. I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. I got a small drill bit. I measured in on each side about three inches. I'm just guessing for the moment. I'm going to drill a couple pilot holes in it. Do that here in a sec. Alright, got my drill. Got the bit. That's about it. Got a couple of eye hooks, I'll show them to you real quick right here. A couple of eye hooks. I opened them up a little bit. Well, what I do, I've got some cyanoacrylate. This is just thin CA glue. You can buy it online, Amazon, anywhere you want. I just put a little dab on the threads, not much. I just put a little tiny bit. Sign, hold it. All right, start this in, screw it down. That's pretty good. Same thing, the other hook. And just a little dab. That's all it takes. Alright, so I'm going to do the other hook the same way, just a dab of CA.
Okay, so, and these are two coats of the matte finish now. Now I'm going to switch over. I'm going to put on, start building up that final finish. Let me move the camera in just a bit. Let's, so now I have the Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover Gloss Clear. I'm going to put about three or four coats on here. I'm going to pause this and move my camera. Like I said, there's a light breeze. I don't want to get it on the lens, so I'll be right back. Okay, while this is drying, I'm going to put a chain on it so they can hang it. I had some scrap chain laying around right here. So just go ahead and we'll put that on there like that. Got a pair of channel locks. Just crimp it shut. That's all I'm doing, the eye hooks. it okay there it is it's got uh, a total of four coats on it now and I ran out of that gloss spray I'll probably put one more coat on it and uh, call it done anyway there you go I'll take questions and answers here in just a minute but that's it that was that easy and uh, you can take more time with it you can do things differently that's kind of fun and uh, people that ask you for signs they like it when it's done they think they're pretty cool it's all handmade hang on just a second we'll do questions and answers okay questions and answers um, what bits am I using on the router well I use the detail bit the 60 degree groove bit the 90 degree groove bit and uh, I used about uh, it's a quarter round or a half round just to do the edging around there and uh, you can do the edging in a lot of ways if you got a jigsaw you can cut round corners you can cut different patterns um, and then you can sand it uh, what kind of sanders do I use well I have a belt sander it's a Makita and I have a random orbital sander it's a Bosch and on signs I usually don't go much higher than 220 maybe 320 it depends on the wood on this one um, I think we finished off around 150 and that's good enough because I put a fairly thick film finish on these so uh, it doesn't make sense to go super high on the grits what kind of a spray gun uh, did you use to on your compressor well it's a badger b-a-d-g-e-r it's on Amazon they're inexpensive and it works great for shooting stains and I uh, like lacquer you want to put lacquer in there you can shoot lacquer anything thin it works real good and they're not that expensive uh, most of the time on uh, the finish work though not the stain now the finish work what kind of what kind of finishes are you using well you can use Krylon they make a good finish um, today I use Rust-Oleum that's what I had laying around if it's something that's going to be outside that I'm concerned about, I'll go to Helmsman or some kind of a spar varnish. They tend to be more durable in the outdoors. Um, how did I do my staining? Well, I use Trans Tint dye. I'll show you. You can buy it online and I mix them up with water or alcohol in my little Badger spray gun. But this is what they look like right here. And somebody asked me, hey, can you do one of those hot dog barbecue cookers? And I wasn't going to do it, and I thought, okay, I will. So I'll show you what that looks like. We'll show you how to do these on one of the upcoming videos. It's, uh, it's kind of a joke item, a novelty. You would set this on the barbecue take your hot dog or a piece of steak it's usually a hot dog and slide it over right here okay kind of looks like his wiener hanging out there and you put it on your barbecue and shut the lid and it actually cooks the hot dog so it was just something fun I did out of horseshoes somebody said hey 
can you do a project like that online and show us how you did it? Yeah, sure. They're quick and easy to do. Give me a thumbs up if you think I should do that. Give me a comment telling me, yeah, you'd be interested to see it. Um, I kind of held off on it. I'm not sure how some people would, you know, respond to it. But it, it's a fun gimmicky thing. All right, subscribe. You people have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.